Good morning, everybody. It's midnight and beyond. Welcoming you back to the world of Ed, Ed, and Eddie, the Misadventures. I tried to start the episode off with something that wasn't the batter Ed for once. It's not nearly as exciting. In this episode, we are going to do something that is rather difficult, and that is the Elusive Scam 5. Well, not really elusive, it's easy to locate, but uh, the other things within the scam itself are not so easy to locate. You'll see what I mean when we actually get to it. Let's get a move on, shall we? Because it is a rather difficult quest, from what I remember. Though there is a very cool glitch that was discovered in it that allows you to beat it in like 5 seconds, which is really cool. But I don't know if I'll be able to show that off. I might show it at the end of the scam if we can pull it off. Sarah's standing right in front of the haunted house. Another beloved antique from a very beloved episode. Let's go ahead and begin. Scam 5. Mr. Yum Yum! Mr. Yum Yum! Where are you? Hey, Jimmy! I think I saw Mr. Yum Yum in the old abandoned house! Mr. Yum Yum! Help! Help! That house is haunted! Somebody save him! Tell you what, Jimmy boy! I'll help you get your pal back for a quarter! Not so fast! You'll get paid upon delivery, and it better be in one piece, too! Fine! <laughs> you miserable little runt! The door's locked! Stuck inside this dusty and decrepit hovel of disrepair! And me without protective gloves or headgear! Mind telling me how Mr. Yum Yum got in here in the first place? Quit your griping! I knew Jimmy would pay top dollar to get that stupid doll back! So I told Ed to hide it in the house! <laughs> nice job putting it in the window, big guy! That was pure genius! But I did not put him in the window, Eddie! I left him on the mantle here! Oh, well, I must say that... But print is the right dimension. How would you know? That's <laughs> right! The house is haunted! He clung to it to the seventh level of Hades! Yeah, I'm sure it's just the wind. <laughs> Hi, Hi, you boy boyfriend. friends! Kickers! Looking for Mr. Goodbar? It's Yum Yum, actually. Trade. Yum yum for good boyfriend presents. Or maybe you'd like to skip the presents and go straight to the smoochin. <laughs> no, no, we'll get you some presents. Bring Mr. Yum Yum back to Jimmy. Now, the way you glitch this out and make it so you finish the mission in five seconds, you need to have Double D disassemble the a saw blade that they have going towards Mr. Yum Yum, and that will end the mission. But if you get anywhere near the cankers, they will just start smooching away. And it's an instant game over. So you need to get presents that will distract all three of them. So the way you do it is that like you jump across like through here, and you're able to get behind them and have Double D disable it before getting presents and before getting caught. And you can finish the mission in less than five seconds, which is really, really cool. But what isn't cool is that I haven't really refreshed myself on the entirety of this level in a long time. I watched that speedrun, but it did not show off this level very well, so I really don't know what to expect because it's been a long stinking time. But at least we finally know which one Mr. Yum Yum is, right? It's the bunny in this universe. That's cool, I guess. Uh, what they say? Bring a. You must. Must bring the can of axle grease first to open this door. Okay, sure. So, let's just start looking around the house to find some presents, I guess. This is, I remember this being a really annoying level. Uh, we need to find the ship in the bottle first, open this door, another relic from an old episode. Uh, let's go over here. I love that episode where, like, they, Double D answers the door and sees the canker's there, and they, he just closes it slowly, and they let him close it because they know they could just tear it down later. It's really funny, but whatever. Let's go ahead and batter this. This is definitely the most puzzle-heavy episode. Uh, the other one was all about like teamwork and all that jazz. This one's just about uh, really difficult puzzles. Let's see if we can do it though. The door's locked. You can only open from the other side. This door is locked from the inside. Who would do such a thing? As Bubble Buddy infamously said. God, I can't sink and wait for Battle for Bikini Bottom. And now they're attacking us uh, throughout the house as well, which is annoying. 
Um, I can't wait for Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrates, so it's thinking amazing. Like, supposedly they're bringing back unused content, and apparently there was going to be an evil bubble buddy or something like that. And, hello. Okay, there was gonna be an evil bubble buddy or something like that, so like, is, I don't know if it's gonna be a boss fight or a robot or whatever, I'm just really thinking excited for it. Let's get that, we got new enemies, the spiders. Uh, they seem pretty straightforward, easy to defeat. Just that, they'd be a bit difficult to see. Uh, but let's see, just get rid of them. There's a trophy right there. Must be something to put this trophy on, huh. Let's head up here then. Uh, okay. Come on, come on! Just gotta get it properly lined up. And we could drop this over... There's bats in here as well? Oh, jeez. And then we drop the trophy and it explodes! How wonderful! There's a trophy stand right here, so that's where we gotta take it. Uh, I believe there's three jawbreakers here, and of course the usual sandbox and chicken. The chickens are pretty easy to find because like they're in big open areas that like they want you to chase them around for like a long period of time, so you usually always run into those. The sandbox, I don't even know where they would put a sandbox in this area. Uh, we'll just have to keep our eyes open, or keep our eyes peeled, whatever you want to say. Let's go over here, drop this here, and we're good. Pooped out a ship in the bottle. Okay, that's the first treasure already. The first present. Uh, do we really have to, like, get up here like this and... How do we pick it up? Oh, with Ed. Okay. Uh, it might be May's gift, or... I think we just... He carries all of them, because he's the carrier of the group. Uh, but wait a minute. Instead... Let's throw this real quick. And it explodes. Cool. Uh, double D should be able to open this door, so we have a shortcut back. Like, we need double D just to open the door for us. Like, you can't just open it ourselves. Only double D is intelligent enough to open a door, apparently. Uh, maybe, maybe it is his hair. Maybe his hair does have security clearance to get through the door, but we just wouldn't know about it. Hmm. Like, I'm so stinking upset that it's, like, my one gripe with the movie. The movie's amazing, but, like, the one complaint I have with it is that they told us in interviews that we would see what was under double D's hat but it didn't end up happening. There's a lot of stuff to go over in terms of beta element uh, stuff. Uh, I might go over in this episode since I'm already talking about it, but whatever, we're just gonna bring this over to them. I was wondering if that was gonna happen, so we, we just, I was afraid of like walking over to them would like trigger the kiss, but it happens, so I guess we could walk over to them when we have a present. Okay, give me a second. Like I said, now I can talk about the beta element stuff. Um. But yeah, the movie was pretty stinking phenomenal. I loved how it ended and everything like that, but um... They did say in interviews that they we would see what was under Double D's hat in the movie, and we end up not seeing that. Which is really, really lame, but... There was apparently... This is coming from a dear friend of mine, Yuki Mizuno. She is a really, really, really big Ed and Eddie fan. She adores that show, probably a lot more than I do, even. And she actually got into contact with one of the writers, and they told her about a bunch of stuff that didn't make it into the final product. So that's Lee's gift, the ship in the bottle. And then she's just like, swirling around over here, just looking at it. Bring the can of Axel Grease to Marie Kanker. Okay, my favorite of the Kanker sisters. I know, even though they're all super creepy, we all had our personal favorite Kanker, and Marie was mine. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if that was a hole or if that was just a puddle. Uh, but yeah, what was I saying? There was, uh, she was telling uh, Yuki Mizuno about like all these different uh, beta elements from the movie. Uh, two things in particular. One was a scene that got deleted because it was too inappropriate. There was going to be a scene where the Eds would actually discuss penis sizes for some reason. I think they said Eds was the smallest, which is funny because you think it would be the biggest, and then I think Eddie's was the biggest? It would be weirder to have Double D's be the biggest, but, um, I'll ask Yuki what it was specifically and we could have that on screen if you want to know the tier list for Ed Ed Schlons, I guess Um, uh, here's May, but whatever. Can we open this door? Uh, no we cannot Uh, but yeah, that's one of the things, but the other thing is revolving around Double E's hat Um, at the end of the movie, I, I'll try to be vague because I don't want to spoil the movie in case you haven't seen it yet uh, at the end of the movie, we discover something about Eddie that, like, he's been keeping from us for a long time. But originally, there was going to be two other secrets revealed, one for each Ed. For Double D, it was going to be the hat. We would finally see what was under his hat. But for Ed, and this is just really stinking cool in my opinion, Ed was going to reveal to the other two that his name isn't actually Ed. 
His name was going to actually be Bob, and he said that he just called himself Ed so that he would be able to fit in with the other two because he thought they wouldn't be friends with him otherwise. And that is just insane, and I can't believe that... Like, that sounds so cool and everything, and like such a big twist right in the end of the show that his name's actually Bob. But they didn't end up doing that. They said the reason was just like for plot complications, because there is an episode where like they go back in time to like when they were babies, and like they see that Ed was uh, called Ed before they met Double D, and like he was like Ed and Eddie were friends before they met Double D, so um, Ed wouldn't feel the need to rename himself Ed to fit in with the group because the group was just him and Eddie at, the, at that point. So. If only season 5 didn't exist, because season 4 was supposed to be when the show ended, if only that didn't happen, then maybe we would have actually seen Double D's hat. That is like the only reason, which is really stinging lame. I feel like they could have changed it or just said like, um, they could have written it around and be like, Eddie, Ed just wanted to be friends with Eddie specifically, and like, he decided to change his name to that, and whatever. I don't know, just, I really wish that we got to see it. Um, and for Double D, like, I don't know, there's a lot of theories as to what is under the hat, and okay, I'm just gonna assume this is not what I need to do. Uh, there's a lot of theories as to what's under the hat, of course, and, uh, the most famous theory is that it is, uh, a dodgeball incident, like, there's some reference to, like, there's an episode where they're playing dodgeball and, uh, Double D is freaking out immensely, saying that, like, it's, like, gym class all over again, like, he's covering his head while it's happening, and, uh, it's making him freak out hardcore, and people think there's, like, a giant scar underneath his head that, um, uh, is covering up the scar or whatever. Uh, I don't think this is true, personally, because, um, if it happened in school, then, like, the others would know about it, and, like, when his hat does get, uh, taken off for the first time in the show, we don't get to see it, but Ed and Eddie see it for the first time, and they're shocked by it, so, like, but even though in the past it showed that he had his hat way back then, it's so, like, they wouldn't know, but, like, I don't know, it's just confusing, I feel like we would have known by now if... Like, that was specifically if it was the dodgeball thing. I, I remember I had some other theory as to why I didn't think the dodgeball theory was true. I just think it's a bit different. Something, like... I don't know, a scar doesn't seem like something to be embarrassed about, or, like, uh, scandalous enough, in my opinion. I just don't know. Um, but with the dodgeball thing, it's just, like, it doesn't seem right to me. But there is a Flash game that was on uh, Cartoon Network's website where, like, it's like a... A food fight lunchroom thing and in that thing uh, you do uh, get to see Double D's head he like uh, throws his hat up in the air and whatnot but the game was not made by the original creators of the show so it's like not canon that that's what's under there it's just like he has some hair underneath what the fruit do I do here what I'm sorry I'm just stuck here I got like all my topics for the entire episode out of the way before I even did anything what do you want me to do Oh, okay, this hole right here, you use trample it in here to get him on this side. Okay, I'm sorry, that was so stinking ridiculous. But let's break all these things, and Jawbreaker ranks to the TV. Okay, very, very good. It's like, very Gary good. Uh, open this door. That should not have taken so stinking long, I apologize for that. Now we're completely out of topics for the rest of the episode. Like, they're just running like crazy. Uh, they're only- what would they do without each other? Lee, we already got you your present, you shouldn't be interrupting us. But now that we open that, what does that do for us? Uh... We can't- actually, let's switch to- not that. Get down. Okay, switch to Ed. Yeah, destroy this. There's a quarter, or a super quarter, and this thingy. Hmm, this should work. Okay, there you go. Jeez. That should not have been that difficult. Uh, no, where did that open up from? Uh, they're not gonna tell us. Great. Okay, it's over here. Cool. Uh, we head down here into the love shack. Love shack! La la love shack! Chicken! Get the 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 chicken! Oh, we gotta go faster. Okay, cool. Hurry up and get it! There we go! Gonna miss out on that chicken. And our next Easter egg is Ed, Ed, and Eddie. It is uh another movie recording. Movies can be viewed at the uh in the cul-de-sac. I think this is just like it's not really a recording. It shows you like the voices of Ed, Ed and Eddie, um, uh, doing their lines, so you get to see their faces and everything like that. I think it's just still images of both of them, of all three of them. 
and it's like just six seconds long, it's not all that fancy, so um, I'll link the more interesting interview, the one that goes over like the video game and the uh, just behind the scenes stuff and all that jazz, and I think it talks about the movie a little bit. I'll have that link in the description just because I think that's a lot more interesting of a viewing thing to watch. But yeah, other than that, I think we're good to just keep on going. Uh, we got the chicken, we got one of the jawbreakers. There should be two more, and then the sandbox. I'm most worried about the sandbox because A, uh, one of the jawbreakers is supposedly right next to the sandbox, though maybe that'll help me find it. And B, I just don't know where they would put a sandbox in this area. Uh, let's get the spider off. They also grab onto you, which is annoying. We got more quarters. I think there's a jawbreaker down here. It said something about being near where we lower the water level. And we got some water, and we might be able to mess with it, so let's find out. Jump up here. Uh, let's trample it. This better work this time. Or not. Get it closer. There we go. It's like... Oh, okay. There's the jawbreaker. Got that one. And the cog. Intriguing. Raise the water level, no, lower it, okay. And I guess we could hear them laughing in the echoes, this is really creepy. Jump down here, and we'll go around this way. Okay, very, very nice. I don't even know how you walk across this, it doesn't seem very sturdy, but whatever. Let's use Ed, get rid of all the bats, or not. Get rid of them. Get all these things, get all them gumballs. That's kind of remind me of, like, a crowbar thing. Now I'm just gonna get on the topic of the national decks. Oh boy, I don't even know how, what to think about that. I genuinely don't think the Switch can't handle having every single Pokemon in the Pokédex, and it's definitely not because like Game Freak is lazy or anything like that. I think Nintendo's to blame, honestly, just the fact that they like because Pokémon's such a money maker for them, they gotta force this game out like every year, basically, because like a new Pokémon game out every year because uh, people are just so stinking impatient and then they want their stinking money and and whatnot, so I would honestly prefer if- my god, can we get this quarter? Thank you. Um, they were able to delay Animal Crossing, but I know like Animal Crossing and Pokemon 2 completely different things, but I would like it if they delayed uh, the Pokemon- if they delayed uh, Sword and Shield just so we could get uh, all the Pokemon back. I don't know, I'm questioning like how many people genuinely care about having the National Dex in uh, Sword and Shield. In terms of actually catching them all, I don't think many people do that. I don't do that, obviously, and I'm sure a lot of people other other people don't, but the main problem is just that, like, I'm sure many, 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 many people uh, kept all of their original teams from all their past playthroughs of Pokemon and have kept them um, in all these games for years to come. So they keep on transferring them to the newer games so they could hold on to their teams forever, but you won't be able to bring them to Sword and Shield, so... It's going to be kind of disappointing that that won't happen. Instead, they're just going to appear in a later Pokemon game. Because, like, uh, Junichi Masuda finally said in an interview, like, he says we, he hears us loud and clear about wanting the National Dex back, but he did not say that's not going to... It's going to happen in an update. He didn't say it was going to happen before the game release or that there's going to be... Like, he just said that, like, it's not happening. I'm sorry, but these Pokemon will return in, a future, in future games. So, hopefully you don't hate us too much for it. And it's kind of sad, like, people have been, like, so stinking vicious towards it, because, like, uh, it definitely shouldn't be sending death threats to people because of this. It's, uh, not appropriate in any situation to do that. But, um, it's just kind of unfortunate that, like, we won't be getting the National Dex. My main sad problem is that, like, I was really hoping to have my whole team be with me in the Galar region. Even if it's not, like, every single Pokemon, uh, chances are that there are some Pokemon from my past teams that I won't be able to bring with me. Which is really unfortunate, so... Um, I really don't know what to do, and like, they said that it was because of, like, animation stuff, and the animations have been, uh, reused since X and Y, supposedly, uh, just updated a little bit. So I don't really buy that either, it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of an unfortunate circumstance where we're not getting them. And we really can't do anything else about it that we haven't already done, it's just continue to be kind, because, like, they're not gonna want to do it if you're all being super vicious and mean towards them. But, yeah, I'm just kind of sad about it, because, like, I would have really liked to have walked around, like, an HD console Pokemon game with my pre-marina, but chances are that's not going to be happening. And, I guess, walking around with a partner isn't happening in general, which is really lame. I really liked how everything was set up in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, but it doesn't seem like that's happening. There are some roaming Pokemon that are out on the field, but not in all areas, but whatever. 
Uh, what is this? It's another trophy. Okay. Uh, let's go and dodge this. Uh, oh, I knew it. Uh, let's see. Where did the trophy go? Where is it? Get up here. Grab that. Let's see if we can do this again. It's a big stinking chandelier! Like I said, the hitbox is a lot bigger than it appears to be, so watch out. Get the trophy again. A chandelabrum? Is that what it's called? Uh, let's walk and place it here. And that gives us, uh, that's a can of oil or whatever for Marie. Very weird present, but okay. Got this cash first. Uh, we're still missing the sandbox and the final jawbreaker, though. Hopefully we'll find it in the third area. That seems a bit appropriate. Get that oil can, and we need to switch to Double D real quick. So, open this door for us, Double Deputy D. Oh, this should work. This should work. And we should be good to go. Pick this up. Walk across. And where's the exit? Is that to the main room? Let's find out. I think it is. Just head on over here. And we got our second canker present. Just walking so slow. I gotta just jump on top of each other. Here you go. You're a weird one, Marie. And we gotta bring the taxidermy book to May Kanker. Okay, never mind. You're perfectly normal in comparison. A taxidermy book with the fruit. Oh, uh, we go down here now, and uh, she's gonna be all like, whoa, whoa, whoa. it's so stinking weird. Uh, just run down here, and they're laughing hysterically again. Nothing so far. Just want to make sure we don't miss this sandbox. We should be fine. We're looking for a sandbox and a jawbreaker. It should be a cinch, right? Uh, here's hoping. Uh, power to the elevator is not turned on. Okay. Is there a switch that Double D could do? Maybe? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Not for now, anyway. Uh, we got all these things in here. Oh, there's the sandbox. Why do I- why did I think this was so difficult back in the day? Like, I could not for the life of me get the, uh, the second costume fully completed, but whatever. There's the jawbreaker, there's the sandbox. We're good. I guess just another instance of kid me thinking everything was difficult, but in reality, it really wasn't. Okay, I'm fine with an easy trip down memory lane. That's always nice. Uh, but yeah, now that's taken care of. Uh, what do we do? We're gonna wanna trample Ed. So we can throw him up there. Do that. My, my. Intriguing. Ingenious! This lift goes straight up to the library. Probably for those heavier tomes. Gee, that's really interesting, but we gotta find something to give those cankers, Sockhead. <laughs> Books can wait. On the contrary, a book is a gift that anyone can treasure. I'm sure we'll find something <laughs> suitable, even for a canker. Uh, I didn't really hear what they said, but whatever. Let's go up here. And what do we got? I unfortunately had the volume turned down, so I couldn't really hear what they were saying, but I should be pretty straightforward. Find the book in the library. Okay, might be a little bit more difficult than I thought. Now uh, we gotta get Double D up there. Or not. Uh, let's try going up this way. This is beyond my capabilities. Just get the Eds over here, and then it should be within your capabilities. It is not. Okay. What do you want us to do? Okay, now it magically works. Sure. This should work. Maybe we had to get rid of the bats, and then it would just magically control properly? I really don't know. This game is a weird one. Another spider, get rid of it. And in here. This place is kind of creepy. Just get rid of all this stuff. Get rid of all the spiders, because they're going to be a pain in the butt on our way out, probably. Uh, trample it again? A lot of double D action in this area. Of course, we hit our head on the board. I think that is what we gotta do. It's just at the right angle. Oh, we just use Ed. Okay, cool. And now we use Eddie. 
So you just gotta sometimes switch between all the eyes to see if something glows, and then you could start using the other characters. Because sometimes you get stuck on a puzzle for so long, then it turns out you're just using the wrong Ed the entire time. Let's make our way up here. Slowly but surely. Uh, oh jeez, another spider. Come on, get out of here. Tower of Eddie. So we all gotta stick together. And... Uh, take a quick detour to get some corns. Delicious, delicious corns. I think we're good. Head this way. And... Everyone coming back, thank you. Just gotta make it across this now. Oh boy. Oh, there's the trophy stands. We're getting close. There's the trophy. And there's some optional cash. Gotta go for the cash, of course. Get that. Get all them corns. And to the trophy. Just avoid the big old chandelier. Chandelumbrum. Never heard it called that before. Then what's a chandelier then? Uh, whatever. Go over here. Run across. And there you go. How very convenient. It's like they set this up for us or something like that. Uh, but yeah, this mission was a lot easier than I thought it was going to end up being. Just carry this super heavy book that we need only Ed to carry it because it's so stinking heavy no one else can do it. Just make our way back. Hopefully no attacks from any enemies along the way. And we will be done with scam number five. Very, very cool. Just gonna walk down the staircase now, gotta do it all slow, like... I guess we could just have a nice little victory stroll, appreciating everything that we've overcome. I'm really happy that this LP just wound up being a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And... we're good. Ooh. Ooh. And now they're all just wiggling around- May's going at it, she's just like, what the fruit? What is she even doing? Okay. We're just gonna disable the saw and call it a day. My, my. Intriguing. You completed scan 5, Nightmare on Edge Street. Current game completion, 69! And now you know why I didn't get any of the jawbreakers yet. Because I totally planned this. Simple as that. Okay, like, I don't understand that, like, we got it before the saw blade got to him, maybe the cankers already cut him in half and, like, they were just, they put him back together making him seem like he wasn't cut in half and they did the thing, I don't even know, that kind of confuses me. But, uh, I said I'd try to show you what it's like to beat that mission, uh, in five seconds, I'll try to do it, I don't know if I'll be able to, but if I can, that'll be really cool. And we'll just have a nice little extra at the end of this episode. So, see you in just a moment. Okay, I really cannot get it to sync and work. I'm not a professional speedrunner, and it's like frame perfect from what I understand. Basically, you're supposed to jump back here and get the saw blade before they stink and make out with you. I'm just going to show you the clip from GDQ because I'm not able to do it on my own. Alright, so, um, let's see if I can get it. It's very specific, so I might not get it. So what he's going to try to do is use double D here to activate the saw by pressing Y. Ah, oh, and he got it first try. Wow. That was great. Wow. First try, scam five. He great. made that look like a piece of cake. <laughs> we didn't even get to hear hubba hubba. Okay, we weren't able to do it, but at least I showed you what it is like to be cool. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those people. But anyway, we have gotten... Up to scam 5. Scam 6 is the final main one in the game, but there's still one more bonus scam. I really wish you would be able to do the bonus scam before the main game ended, but that is not the case. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to do a little editing finagling. Next episode, we will be doing the second bonus episode. You can only get it after you get the final costume piece, which is in scam 6, but I'll just show that off first, and we will also be getting all of the jawbreakers in the candy machine because I feel like that would also be appropriate to show them all off. And then in the final episode, the finale, we will actually just show the final level and all the final collectibles you could get there. 
a little bit confusing, but I just feel it'd be a bit more appropriate to have the episode end off properly on the final scam. And then also just have, uh, not have like a weird bonus episode that's like five seconds long. So hopefully you are all okay with that. Next time on Ed and Nettie, the Misadventures, we are going on one more fantastical journey through the world of make-believe. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.